Welcome back to another episode of the Extinction Survival Guide. So on episode 7, we went on an expedition to try to tame a parasaur, and uh, we failed miserably. We found a really cool robot dino that was promptly killed by robots, just like the ones on the right-hand side of the screen. So uh, today we are going to see if we can redeem ourselves and try to catch this other parasaur, which just popped up, and... Uh, so I'm going to try to bola this guy. Now, if you've ever tried to tame a parasaur, uh, you know that they run like crazy the second they take any damage. So the only way to really effectively tame them is to either get them stuck or hit them with a bola, which immobilizes them for a few seconds. Oh gosh, that freaked me out. Okay. Looks like that sentinel is not going to kill our guy, thank goodness, because I was afraid we were going to lose another one to a robot. Now there's a couple other robots to our left, and uh, those are just going to kick his butt if they come over here, so I'm hoping they don't, um, and I may have to fight them and run if they do. So uh, we knocked him unconscious with rocks, took a few, oh man, those things, they're right there in the background rolling around, yikes, okay. Thankfully, they seem to be heading that direction and fighting this pterodactyl, but uh, that probably won't keep them busy for long. Oh, look, another parasaur. Slightly higher level and just about to be dead. Yep, that's not going to work. I was thinking about doing a double tame. I seem to always end up running into two of a species at the same time and taming both. Uh, I don't know, it's just kind of my thing, I guess. So, uh, yeah, there we go. It looks like he is eating those berries happily. Now, I've been saving my medjo berries because medjo berries are much more effective for taming a herbivore and, uh, than any of the other berries. I eat the other berries and, uh, you know, keep them for dino food, but medjos are really good for taming. Now, this guy is still in the middle of taming up, um, but his torpidity is dropping slowly. Um, if you're new to taming, you just look at the dinosaur and you'll see those two bars. The top bar is his torpidity, which is how unconscious he is. And as that slowly drops, he'll start to wake up. And once it hits zero, he'll wake up, run off with whatever you've put in his inventory. Oh man, I think I saw gas bags in the distance there. Also, did that guy just pop out of nowhere? I don't know. I get so distracted with dinosaurs. Anyway, uh, when that torpidity bar on the top drops to zero, the unconscious bar, he will wake up and run off with whatever I've put on him. But the bar at the bottom is his taming, and that taming keeps going higher as he eats food. And once that hits max, he will be tamed up and he will be my friend forever. And uh, we saw that with kind of with the uh, dodo that we were taming, but it was such a fast tame, I couldn't really explain it because he was just tamed up before we even had to do anything. So um, I'm actually going to gather while I am taming this guy because, wow, he is taming really fast. That's great. I don't have any taming multipliers on. I guess these parasaurs just tame up really quickly. I mean, he is like a level one. So, I mean, level ones just are really quick to tame. If you think you're going to have a hard time taming a dinosaur, go for a really low level. Yeah, he's level two. I mean, that's, that's super easy. So I have a nice metal node right here, and you can see by the color, it's much more metallic than the other stone. That means this is a rich metal node, which is going to give us tons of metal. Oh. I am overweight already. Now metal will increase your weight like crazy, and you can usually only carry a few chunks at a time. But a parasaur is main thing that it's helpful for is uh, just being a really good pack mule. It can carry a ton of weight, and the very early stages of the game, oh, there we go, he's tamed up. They are super helpful for that. So we're just gonna make a quick name, not gonna do anything fancy. And I'm going to drop the rest of this stuff over here. And now we are just going to drag that saddle into his saddle slot. And there we go, we have a Parasaur. Now, the uh, top right-hand side of the screen, he has the uh, same icons that we have as far as health and stamina. And the reason our screen is flashing whenever we jump on the Parasaur is because he's actually only at about half health. Now, probably what happened is a lot of times when you tame up a dinosaur with high taming effectiveness, they'll actually gain quite a bit of levels. But it looks like we uh, just beat the thing half to death accidentally while we were shooting rocks at him. So you gotta watch out that you don't actually kill the thing you're trying to tame. But it looks like we went, you know, about half health, which is totally fine. And there we go. We finally broke all the metal on that metal node. 
And wow, we got a lot of metal. That is great. Now, metal is one of those things that's usually real hard to find. I think that's a piece that flew off of that other metal rock. So, uh, yeah, we can actually use our bow and arrow on the back of this parasaur. And you can see that it's moving a lot faster than we do normally on foot. And we can also boost the speed of a land dino as we level it up, so it'll actually be an even more effective mount. But if you look at its weight right there, it's very low weight. And uh, we've put a whole bunch of stuff on this guy, so he just has a really high weight capacity. We can also have the dinosaur attack by using the bottom right trigger. And a lot of carnivores will actually gather meat and all that good stuff and hide uh, if you just keep attacking them. But being an herbivore, he's not so good for that, so we're just going to harvest that ourselves. Now, another nice thing about a dinosaur is if you jump off a cliff, uh, is if you're riding the dinosaur, it will take fall damage and die. But if you jump off the dinosaur just before it lands, nobody gets hurt, which is great. Oh man, that tech stegosaur is so cool. I really want to tame that guy, but uh, if I try to right now with a slingshot, he is going to kick my butt. So I'm not fast enough to run away effectively, I don't think. But, uh, you know, we definitely need to get that stegosaur at some point. Okay, cool. Refilling all of our water because we were just about to run out of water while we were taming that parasaur. I was actually worried I would die of dehydration while taming him, which is part of why I was not moving around too much while we were taming it. And I'm gonna kill this dodo. Even though this thing is uh, pretty low level, it's still got some decent uh, damage it can do. And there we go, leveling up again. That's great. All right, so I'm going to focus on trying to get this guy safely back to my base because having a dinosaur as a pet is really helpful, especially one you can ride. Now, I'm going to try to tame a Dilophosaur if I can run into one that's still alive. Um, I haven't yet for a while. So, uh, but there, that will actually be a pretty effective turret if I can set him on turret mode at my base because he'll be able to shoot stuff that's, uh, you know, coming across my little bridge. Check that out. Got our nice bow and arrow on our parasaur. We are looking fancy. And we got a pretty nice beard going on too. Now we're finally starting to look like a survivor. Yeah. So at this point in the game, things really start to take a turn for the better because I can ride a dinosaur, which has a lot of health and a lot of weight and a lot of stamina. So it's gonna be, be able to travel a lot further. It won't be as dangerous running around and I won't die as much if I'm on its back because things will attack and hit the dinosaur before they actually hurt me. And uh, you know, being able to shoot a bow from its back is also really helpful. So that tree on the left hand side, I might actually use as a hidden dinosaur pen at some point. Uh, if I can get like some stone walls going, it'll be very effective. But for now, I am actually going to gather some more materials because I'm going to want to make the walkway bigger because right now uh, we have that one little thatch walkway leading from our base and we're not going to be able to get the dinosaur through the door. That is one problem with dinos. Um, you know, I've had plenty of problems with my dinosaurs going into the base when I've been on my raft fortress. Sometimes they'll just glitch and float right into the base. Uh, if you watch my Ragnarok series, there's a lot of times when we've ended up with dinos in the house, but uh, that's not supposed to happen. So I'm going to use the uh, terrain a little bit, uh, try to see if I can get over here. There we go. Okay, great. It's, it's hard terrain to navigate right here, but that's actually great because it'll be real hard for dinosaurs to just kind of make their way over to us. So uh, another great thing about a parasaur is you can use it kind of as a mobile storage bin. So I've got a lot of materials on that guy, way more than I could carry, but uh, I'm just pulling stuff into my inventory and crafting it. And if I need more, I've got more. So I'm going to try something and first of all I'm just going to see if I can get this guy to come across the bridge safely. So I'm going to extend the bridge and you can see here the whole bridge is blocked off by that one little thatched doorway. But the bridge is actually too small to walk across. And let me rearrange things just a little bit. I think that should do the trick. Okay. So I'm going to add another foundation over here and see if I can extend the bridge further. And there we go, we got some thatch ceilings. So I'm gonna drop those. And I should be able to extend this one more. I think that'll work. Okay, looks like I can walk across that. 
And I'm gonna make this too wide for now. Uh, hmm. Well, looks like that'll fit. Okay, great. So now I can walk all the way across, and my Parasaur can walk across, but it looks like he's having a little trouble right there. He might... Oh, that was close. I was afraid he was going to just fall through the crack there. Okay, great. Looks like we are good. I also forgot he was on follow, so he almost fell down into the swamp, which, uh, you know, he might have gotten eaten by a crocodile. So, uh, yeah. Always remember, when you tame a dinosaur, he will be on follow immediately. Now another nice thing about having a bigger dinosaur is they drop a lot of manure, which can be useful for fertilizer when we start growing crops. And we can actually start growing crops pretty soon here. So I don't really like that good size gap, but I think what I'm going to do is just rearrange this a little bit. We're kind of creating a maze that uh, computer dinosaurs will have too much trouble navigating. So, you know, let me go ahead and demolish this last one. I hate doing that, I didn't think about it too hard, and uh, probably didn't have to waste these thatch ceilings, but, you know, it's good experience anyway. Okay, so check that out. In order to get across here, we actually have to take a turn around and navigate this ourselves. So, any wild dinosaur that comes after us, if we make it across this bridge, he's going to try to run straight towards us, just because that's what the computer-controlled dinosaurs do. And that will cause him to fall straight down into the swamp. So hopefully this will be a totally effective way to keep dinos out of our base. We'll see how well it actually works, but uh, as long as we can stand on this side of the base, especially if we can plant a Dilophosaur sitting there, then we should be in pretty good shape, and we shouldn't have any dinos able to actually get over here easily. So there we go. And we're leveling up this Parasaur just like we level ourselves up. And uh, let's see here. Got too much weight, so I'm going to drop this stone right in front of the door. So that's the nice thing about the Parasaur, like I could not carry anywhere near as much weight as he had by myself, but uh, I'm just going to drop some stuff into the storage bin, and you know, I'm probably just going to cut to the end of the video here, and I'll go ahead and rearrange stuff off camera so you don't have to just sit and watch me walk back and forth, but I will drop off these stones here. So, uh, yeah, we'll make another storage bin in the next episode and do some rearranging, maybe between episodes, because that's kind of boring. But check it out. We have a really cool new Parasaur, and that's going to be a real help to our game. So thanks for watching, and we will see you next time. Thanks so much for watching this video from the ARK Survival Guide. If you enjoyed it or found it helpful, please like this video and subscribe to our channel so we can bring you more great guides like this one. ARK is an amazing game, but there is so much to learn before you can really enjoy it. We are dedicated to bringing you high quality guides, tutorials, and let's play videos that are fun, helpful, clean, and suitable for the entire family. There is a tutorial in this series for everything we have done so far in this video. Check out these playlists for more episodes from this series and other guides to help you enjoy your journey on ARC.